In this video, I'm going to talk about visceral and somatic referred pain and explain the neurophysiological mechanism. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. If we want to define what referred pain is, it might be easier to first define what it is not. In case of local pain, the place of nociceptive stimulus is also the place where the pain is felt. Pressure or load on this local point then results in an increase of pain intensity. Referred pain is also different from neuropathic pain, in which case the pain is felt in the distribution of the nerve. In case of referred pain, pain is perceived in a region other than the site of the painful stimulus. Thus, pressure or load on the place where the pain is felt usually does not lead to an increase of pain intensity. However, pressure or load on a place of the sensitized nociceptors results in an increase in pain intensity and the referred pain area. So how can this phenomenon be explained? The leading theory behind referred pain is called the convergence projection theory, which we'll explain in a simplified version. The theory states that pain is not or hardly felt in the area of actual nociception due to a low density of nociceptive afferent innervation. These are usually deep axial or proximal tissues like ligaments, joint capsules, tendons, muscle fascia or muscle tissue in, for example, the lower back or hip. Instead, pain is projected into a more distal area with a high density of nociceptive afferent innervation that converges onto the same second order neuron in the dorsal horn as the tissue of actual nociception. The nociceptive input is then transported to the somatosensory cortex via the spinothalamic tracts and the thalamus. The somatosensory cortex is then confronted with the task of localizing the origin of nociceptive input. It then makes a projection error and decides to project the pain into the more distal tissue with the higher density of nociceptive efferent innervation that is represented to a greater extent in the somatosensory cortex. In case of somatic referred pain, nociceptive input from axial or proximal somatic tissue, for example the left facet joint of L5S1, is projected as pain to a different, more distal somatic tissue like the left buttock and back of the thigh. This is due to the fact that nociceptive efferents of both tissues enter the spinal cord at the same spinal segment. Then, the somatosensory cortex projects pain into the area with the denser nociceptive efferent innervation. In this case, the left buttock and the back of the thigh. In case of visceral referred pain, nociceptive input from the visceral structures, so the internal organs of the body, in this case the stomach, is projected as pain into somatic structures that share the same segmental innervation and that are more densely innervated. This way, visceral referred pain can mask as pain from musculoskeletal structures, in this case the lower back. Visceral pain is often associated with marked autonomic phenomena including pallor, profuse sweating, nausea, GI disturbances, and changes in body temperature, blood pressure, and heart rate. In the following table, you can find an overview about referral pain patterns for different organs. It's important to mention that referred pain does not follow a dermatomal distribution, but is felt within the same sclerotome. However, sclerotome maps are not consistent and differ between different studies and subjects. Therefore, patterns of referred pain can be used to judge not the anatomical source or cause of pain, but at least the approximate segmental location. In any case, it is always referred from proximal to distal direction. At last, referred pain is typically described as deep, aching pain, sometimes like an expanding pressure into wide areas that are difficult to localize. In contrast to radicular pain, it is rarely referred into areas distal to the knee or elbow. The deep aching quality is due to the stimulation of unmyelinated type 4 or C fibers 
that inform the central nervous system about the amount of damage and is often called secondary hyperalgesia. In comparison, stimulation of fast myelinated type 3 or alpha-delta fibers that fire in case of potential tissue damage typically lead to sharp, well-localized pain called primary hyperalgesia. Alright, this was our video on referred pain. Check out the articles in the description down below to study the phenomenon of referred pain in more detail. If you want to learn how to distinguish referred pain from radicular pain, click on the video right next to me. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. Please click the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this and other videos on our channel. You can also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, on our webpage physiotutors.com. Links can be found in the description down below as well. This was Kai for Physiotutors. See you next time. Bye.